Hello, my name is Nathan Smishney, and I'm a critical care and anesthesia doctor at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I would like to take this opportunity to explain to you about a clinical trial, which we are soon to start in the medical intensive care unit at Mayo Clinic called the Keep Pace Trial. I'll explain the goal of our study and how knowledge gained from it may benefit you and the community. But first, let me go over what a clinical trial is and why we do research in medicine, especially in critical care medicine. Critical care medicine, or intensive care medicine, is a branch of medicine that is focused on the treatment of people who are severely ill and require being in the intensive care unit, or ICU. In the intensive care unit, we take care of extremely ill patients. We often have to use breathing machines to help people who cannot breathe by themselves, and medications to support the functions of organs and to treat severe infections. The critical care team often faces situations in which decisions have to be made very quickly. These decisions can have a substantial impact on patient outcomes. This is why it is important to study and understand the results of our treatments in order to get the best results possible and be able to save more lives. We perform clinical trials to obtain data to best determine how to treat our patients. A clinical trial is a process by which doctors and other scientists study treatments, medications, and tests in order to obtain information that may help improve the management of a disease. To complete a clinical trial may take many months and even years. After a medication has been approved for human use, it undergoes several such clinical trials to compare it to other similar medications to find out which one is better. If a medication or treatment is found to be the better one, this may become the standard of care in the future. Clinical trials are the reason why our modern treatments for most diseases are better than the treatments of the past. The goal of clinical trials is to understand if one treatment is better than another. The result of the clinical trial will let us know which is best to treat a disease and in some cases cure it. Here at Mayo Clinic, we conduct clinical trials which have helped us advance the treatment of many conditions, including cancer, heart disease, stroke, and others. Now I want to talk to you about a clinical trial we are starting in the Medical Intensive Care Unit at Mayo Clinic called the Keep Pace Trial. With the Keep Pace trial, we are trying to compare three drugs that have been proven to work and are safe for use in people. We are hoping to find out which one is better in a situation of acute illness. When some patients get really sick and come to the ICU, they may not be able to breathe on their own for many reasons. In these situations, sometimes we have to connect them to the machines that breathe for them in order to save their life. To do that, we have to place a special tube in their windpipe. This procedure is called intubation. Intubation can be difficult to perform and also very uncomfortable if performed while a patient is awake. In order to avoid complications, we use medications to put people to sleep during these acute events. Three of these medications used to sedate people during intubation are called ketamine, propofol, and etomidate. With the keep pace trial, we want to compare the combination of ketamine and propofol, which we call ketafol, with the third drug, atomidate, to see which one has better results in sedation for emergent intubation. It is important to explain that all these medications have been used in thousands of patients for many years and are proven to be safe, but have not been compared with each other in this way before. A group of selected patients will receive the ketamine and propofol at the time of intubation and another group will receive etomidate. All the effects of the medications will be tracked and analyzed to better understand these medications for future use. Not everyone can participate in the clinical trial as these medications cannot be used in certain people. You will not be included in this trial if any of these applies to you. You are between the ages of 18 and 50 and are pregnant, suspected to be pregnant, 
or found by lab work to be pregnant even if you do not know, are known to have tumors or bleeding inside your head, are known to have bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, have been in an intensive care unit and are currently receiving intravenous medication for comfort or sedation, use medications such as morphine or oxycodone, also known as opioids. If your weight is more than 308 pounds or less than 66 pounds, if you're allergic to eggs or are known to be allergic to ketamine, propofol, or etomidate. This means that you will not be included in the clinical trial if it is felt that it is unsafe for you or that your risk would be greater than the benefit you would obtain from either medication. Also, if at any point, even if you were considered to be included in the trial initially, a new last-minute information makes us have any doubts about your safety, you would also not be included in the trial. You will still be intubated, but other medications for sedation may be used at the discretion of your doctor. Getting sick can happen to anyone, and none of us is sure if and when we may become sick. Some of us may also end up in the ICU. In fact, statistics have sh shown that more than 4 million patients are admitted to the ICU each year in the U.S. The main cause of these admissions is respiratory failure. Some of our loved ones may end up needing intubation and the medications needed to sedate them during the process. The more we know about which medications are best and which treatments are safest, the better results we will get in the treatment of friends, family members, or even ourselves. And this is why we are bringing this message to those in our community, to keep you informed of these efforts to advance medicine in intensive care. In most clinical trials, we would ask for a patient's or a family member's permission before making them a part of the trial. We'll make every effort to obtain your consent to participate in this trial prior to proceeding with intubation. However, in the moments of urgency surrounding the placement of a breathing tube, there is little time to hesitate or ask questions. So for our trial, the FDA has allowed us to decide if the study will be right for you or not using very specific criteria like I explained before, even if we are not able to obtain your formal permission due to the urgency of the situation. These criteria are especially focused on your safety and I want to emphasize again that if the risk of you joining the clinical trial is seen to be higher than whatever benefit you may get, then you will not be included. If we are not able to obtain consent from you or your legally authorized representative prior to intubation, we will request your permission to use the data obtained during this procedure later once your clinical situation has stabilized. If you do not provide this permission, we will not use any of the data obtained from your case. I hope this video has been informative. Our intention has been to explain to you what a clinical trial is and why we do them, but especially the Keep Pace trial. I want to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or concerns regarding this trial, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.